So the past few days, I've been really thinking about the word intentional or intentionally doing something. I wrote about it the other day. I'm Pat Sloan. Welcome to my fireside chat. Uh, I'm going to go over the uh, sew alongs that we're doing, give you some updates, talk about some things that came in, tell you some cool stuff that I got involved with that was really neat and something coming up in the future. And you have to stay tuned because I have a little bit of a snack chat halfway through there. So something fun came in the mail. Yummy fun, yummy fun. So let's talk about intentional or intentionally doing things. That's, that was, that is, I always say was, that was my word of the year. No, my, the year just started. It's February. So <laughs> I don't know why I say it like that. So my word of the year is to be doing something intentional or intentionally. And when I pick that, I really didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what it meant to me. Like, how would I use that word on a day-to-day -day basis? What would that mean? And I, I've started, I've thought a lot about that in January. It's just kind of been mauling back there. And my other goal was to write every month about my word. I've always wanted to do that. And I've been doing word of the month. I mean, word, yeah, word of the year for, I don't know, 11 years, 12 years, 800 years, whatever it is. I've never, I've never been managed to go every month and update, write an update on it. But this is the year. This is the year. So I, I did write that on uh, last week. I'll link you over to it. And I, I was just thinking when I was working, like a good example. Here's a good example. So I have the traffic jam that I've been working on, the white plus signs or the white intersection. I call them like the intersection for the traffic, traffic jam. And then that polka dot. And my vision had originally been that that would be uh, more just blue and white. But I could not, I didn't like putting blue sashing. I kept trying it and I'd have to order some because it's kind of a funky blue dot. And I, I, it wasn't working. So my my friends local here um, suggested, of course, like more than one, actually. <laughs> they suggested put red. And I'm like, but I didn't want red. I didn't want to add another color. And so I said, well, okay, let's try it. So I, I was doing two and a half inch sashing, you know, two inch finished. And so I was putting that up there and um, I didn't like it, didn't like it. So I was thinking about, okay, well, let's just let it sit because a lot of times I, and maybe you do this too. Maybe you feel this way. You just go like zoom, zoom, zoom. You're like, I've got to get this done. I've got to go to the next thing and I get the next thing done. Uh, and you don't, we don't, I don't, many of us don't <laughs> take, take a step back and sort of a look, enjoy, not <clears throat> enjoy the process. But in the fact of enjoying the process, you're doing things with more um, intent with, you know, like I'm not just going to rush through this for the sake of rushing through it. I don't have a deadline. Uh, I want to, I'm doing this because I enjoy it. It's fun. It's a hobby. It's not meant to be a race. It's not meant to be a contest. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to leave that up there. So I left it on the wall with uh, some uh, two inch sashing up there. And I, I went with this sort of, it's kind of a pinky red. And let me, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to zoom you in while I'm talking so you can see it a little bit closer. There's Norm, the, the uh, is there next to it. There's Norm. Okay, so let's move Norm out of the way a minute. Okay, so you can see this. And I got sort of this pinky red. And what happened is I noticed it became more of a Americana feel with a red, white, and blue when I had that pinky red in there. Uh, and I put, a, I put the I have a big piece of that. It's like a yard, at least a yard. So I have enough to work with. And I thought, you know what? With the two inch wide, I wasn't loving it. So what I ended up doing was reducing it down to skinny sashing. And I did, and that is a one inch finished sashing. And bingo, that was it. So for me, taking the time to slow down, leave it up on the wall, not rush the process. Now, I'm not advocating you leave it up on the wall for three years and you keep thinking about it. That's, that's stalling. <laughs> that's not progress. I had a friend do that once. She like took up her entire cutting table to lay out a quilt. I don't know why it wasn't on her design wall, but she had it on the table for like three months. And all she was doing was maneuvering like two blocks, color blocks around uh, constantly. And she just couldn't get off the dime and, and sew it up. Uh, and I, I don't want to be like that. That's, that's not productive. You can just get to analysis paralysis. You know, you just, you know, go over and over. So a couple days is usually good enough for me to 
uh, to finally see it because then I would take pictures. So I had the skinnier sashing and then finally I cut some pieces to the size and laid them in and took some pictures. And I'm like, okay, I like this. So I sewed them up because I didn't want to keep thinking about it. So now my next thing is, I think this is, yes, yeah, a three, three by three block. So the next thing is picking, is deciding how many more blocks because I don't want just that size. That's not what I want to like at least a lap quilt. Possibly I have to check how much of that navy dot I have, but uh, possibly a uh, a bed quilt. But I don't I don't know if I have enough of that. So there you go. Of course I could put like some sort of border on it or just put a lot of white squares for the border uh, that would keep that whole feel. But it turned, it's coming out, what's coming out is, is serendipitous. It's much, much different than I was expecting it to be. This, this is not what I had in my head. Uh, what I had in my head wasn't quite solid. So when I was trying to make it work, it, it didn't come out. So this is good. I'm really happy with it. So that's always a plus when you're happy with the outcome. Yay! So this is, uh, today is the February 3rd and it's Monday and this is the day that I put out uh, the Sew Along Out West, the block of the month. This is block number two. So we didn't put it out Friday because it didn't work out to be a day early and the, the first was on the weekend. So it's either going to come Fridays or Mondays if, if it, the first is on the weekend. So you can always remember that. Uh, and also you, everybody was nice and patient where there was some problem with the PDF over at the Free Quilt Pattern site and we had to get that resolved this morning. So you saw it there, but it was not the right PDF. So now it is, and we got that fixed around lunchtime. So I will show it to you. Where is it? Oops, this is back here, hold on. Okay, so out west, block two is all about food because out west, for me, out west thinking about, uh, I was thinking about food. <laughs> so that's, that was the topic. So I started with like the chuck wagon and what was that? A little bit of history on the chuck wagon that I found out. So I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. I, I do a little research each time on things and the whole kind of articles over at um, the Free Quilt Patterns website, who I do this for. Uh, so you know, they paid the bill, so it happens, yeah. <laughs> so this is our yummy food block and it is all sew and flip. All these units, these are all sew and flip. And I have a tutorial on my website that shows you the pictures. Uh, so you can see like, here's the back where I press the seams opposite. And then here's the middle where I was pressing open. So those are some hints that I have on my website for making the block, but it's all sew and flip. The, the thing is keeping track because <clears throat> it's, it's not as lot, you know, your brain sometimes wants to rotate things when it shouldn't. And sometimes you want to be sure you get like, you know, the corners done properly so that when you lay it out, it turns out looking like this. So that is, you know, so I always say, bring your A game, you know, don't go into it thinking, oh, it's just sew and flip. I don't have to think too hard. It's the placement, not the technique that will get you on this one. So you want to be a little bit diligent. <clears throat> and then here is the movie block which uh, the Western movie block. So here's our two blocks and I'm using a fabric bundle that I put together and, and on my project page for this is a link to all the different fabrics I use. So um, that, are, that are still available. So you can uh, pick up some of those unique ones or some other things that you wanna sew along. So that is out west. And because it's food, I also shared on my post today my favorite barbecue sauce because besides, uh, you know, the, the, then the food part, I think barbecue is what a lot of people think of as a classic steaks, barbecue, Western food, um, you know, out West, you know, the barbecue is like a religion. Uh, <laughs> it really is. So we had some, I put my favorite barbecue sauce we got recently as a gift, uh, and it's almost out. So I'm like, what is it? Bob and Nick's so Nick and Bob, something like that. I forget what the name of it is now. It's not something I can get here, so I'd have to order it, um, but it's very, very good. It's different, a little bit different, smoother. So on the food front, 
Uh, be sure if you like to talk food, you come over to my Kitchen Adventures. That's on Facebook. It's a group where there's a whole bunch of us chatting about what we're going to make, what we would like to make, what we have made. If you have questions on a recipe or question on technique, because I will be showing something there. And I'm going to show you here now. Because I had got this lovely, gorgeous card with yummy snacks from Ingrid in Australia. And Ingrid decided that I should have two very classic, well, she sent me massive. So first of all, the very classic Tim Tams, which are cookies. Um, you can see we have opened this one. I couldn't wait. They came earlier in the week. I see, did Greg leave me any? Did he eat them all? No, he didn't eat them all. So there they are. So you can see what the Tim Tams look like. I, I think Tim Tams are like their version of Oreos um, because they also make like all kinds of flavors. So she sent me two other flavors. I can't wait to try the mint ones. Yeah, and the caramel, I'll try them both. And then Ingrid decided that I really, 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 really need to try Vegemite. Ah, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. <laughs> I've never tried Vegemite. I've read, I've gone online and read about it now. I don't know, Ingrid. Ingrid did give me an out. She says, you know, it's an acquired taste and that they grow up on it. Uh, and if you haven't grown up on it, it might not be your thing. But I also read that people, that they use it for, it's a beer extract. So it's got, um, it's not sweet. It's um, savory. And a lot of people will use this like they would use bouillon in stews and soups. Then, uh, and Ingrid said that she does do that too. So I'm going to put that on Kitchen Adventures and find out who is doing that. I read some articles on it and it sounds like something, I would try that before putting it on buttered toast. I don't know, let me know. Let me know if you've tried Vegemite, if you're a fan, because it's, it'd be hard for me. <laughs> I'm a bit picky eater, okay. <laughs> True confessions, I'm picky. <laughs> uh, so I am very excited because the wonderful people at Nancy's Notions asked me if I would do a Pat's pick for the month of, basically the month of February. It came out a couple days ago, the end of January, where they have a page where I sent in all the things that they carried. They wanted me to do a Pat's picks from tools. Tools, Notions, uh, my Jubilant, so I had the Jubilant sewing machine uh, that they carry in their store. And I thought I would show you a, um, a couple of the items that I talked about because, uh, you know, it's more fun to do it that way. I did put it on my website and showed you the link, but uh, one of the things I talked about was the stash and stores. So these are stash and stores are a nice weighted um, tool carriers, basically. And they come in two sizes. So there's a mini one. And what I've got is like these things, like there's a rubber, yeah, I'll show you on the little one. So I'll hold it up. Let me just, I'll just do this. Let's just come down here. Okay, so these are pliable. So see, they bend and they can, you know, you can put things in there. So like the pen can go in here like this, and then I can take the ruler and I can shove it like that. And what I like for this size, the little one, is it can go right by the sewing machine. Like if I wanna put it in further to the sewing machine, I can just set it here. Uh, the bigger one is I use on my table all the time because I will keep, like if I'm doing a lot of trimming, as I showed you for the uh, Out West, this is for trimming the um, sewing foot blocks. I would just leave this in here if I'm using it a lot. So it's not flat. I find it so much easier to pick it up. You ever have trouble picking things up? I do. I just, sometimes certain rulers in particular, they don't come off the surface very well. So this is in here super nice and it doesn't fall over anything. It's nicely weighted. And then the scissors usually go in the pedal part. You know, like they're, th well, this pair is too pointy. So I put it in the pedal part, but the pens go like in the fatter part. I usually keep two rulers and some, you know, other tools like that. So these are the stash and stores that are over there. And let me show you a couple other things. I've got the, my favorite uh, splash rotary cutters over there. And this is something I'm playing with. The chenille um, rotary cutter from Olfa. This is amazing. I've already started to play around with it. I have a project coming up in March for a challenge using the chenille. And so it is super cool. There's a 
blade do you see the black part there's the blade and you can you can turn it yeah, turn the red one see the blade leaves and it actually shows up <clears throat> in another in another unit it's up here so it can go into these are all different size channels and there's lots of videos I'll show you but they're wider wider <clears throat> to go between the blocks here let me show you I mean got the blocks I'm sorry to go between the channel to slice it you know so you'd be going through like this to make to make these slices so this was a a test piece <clears throat> that I did which is uh, I made I made it into a pillowcase but <clears throat> also when you're cutting like this if you're doing a ton of cutting the blade will you're only seeing that little let me get a little closer you're only seeing a little bit of that blade that's being used so on here it's it says turn to get new edge what that means is a new edge for the blade so you can see when I turn it the blade moves <clears throat> and that's so that you can expose a new part of this blade for for cutting so when these were sewn together, you sew lines and then you, you cut in between from the edge and, <coughs> excuse me, and rotary cut down. So you're going to see a little bit more of that. Whoops, go the other way. And I want to show you one other super cool tool that I have on the Nancy's Notion site. <coughs> oh. Okay. I can't blame it on the weather. The weather's been amazing. So here's, let me just put this here because I'm going to need them. My Ulfa uh, ruler. So here is the other, one of the other items. Let me, let me bring this up and show you first. Is the, I, I, I told them that let's show everybody the folding mat because it does come in two sizes <clears throat> and I, I think I don't know whether this is the bigger or the smaller one. This one might be the bigger size. Um, I don't know what size it is, but I'll link you and it'll go to both of them. So when you fold it, that curve goes flat like this. And it is awesome. You don't catch on it at all. The back looks like this. So they have a really sturdy um, plastic coat you know bendable piece on the back so that you can bend it and then this makes it so much easier to go to class have you gone to class and you don't have the bigger mat with you and then all of a sudden you're like struggling because you're trying to cut on this little tiny thing so this is incredible and I want to cut on it for you so I want to show you because it will you will see uh, let me just come in closer so you will see the fold there's and it's a serpentine <coughs> And and what happens is when you press, it goes totally flat. So if I have this piece of fabric and I want to, whoops, let's go like this. We'll go across, you know, here's the serpentine, right? Can you see it? I'll bend it. See the serpentine? So I'm going to cut this across and it just cuts perfectly, just like that. So it's not um, catching on here, it's not dragging on here, and I've done a lot of testing with this because I want to be sure, uh, you know, when I talk to you about it, that you know, I just want to be sure things work. You know, I don't, I don't like to just take stuff and not have tried it myself. That's no good. So it is, it is quite nice. I think you will like it a lot. A lot a lot a lot so those are at nancy's notions i'll link you over to my pics page and if you like seeing that there write you know sign up for nancy's notions um newsletter and then write them and tell them you thought this was a lot of fun to see my pics you know i i think it's really cool you know it's really nice of them uh, i've worked with them off and on um they're baby lock um they're the baby lock family of of companies so you know i've met nancy uh zeman quite a few years ago when we did some baby lock events uh, so you know she's dearly missed so dearly missed um, so that's that for that part and I want to get in to a couple things here to show you because I want to I don't talk about staying organized first <clears throat> you know we've got a lot of us have picked up a planner at, in December to work on these ones sold out 
these are the ones that have calendar and a planner and I'll link you over to some others that have a calendar and a planner uh, this is one of them but there's also a brand new one that came out that's very reasonably priced there's no calendar function let me just be 100% sure yeah this is just project oriented so it's a brand new it's spiral uh, and it's all project oriented so in the front uh, you can list you can list your projects and if, if you need another page take the next you know just put a piece of paper on the next page and list more projects or you could get two books <laughs> list them but then each one is each project has its own page so that you can start listing all the information about it uh, and, and sort of keep motivated so I want to this I have a goodie bag at the end of the show so be sure you watch because one of these plus something else will be some other things will be in the goodie bag so I want you to see that but this is a nice journal it's uh, a different it's just just project tracking uh, so there's nothing a uh, calendar wise and it doesn't have patterns and it doesn't have the fancier stuff the other planners have but if you want one of those other kind I'll link you to that I like it I'm sort of debating whether to pull my project stuff out of this one and put it over here uh, it also is small which is I really like because you can just stick this in your tote bag and take it with you uh, put it in your purse it it's not um, as heavy but it also is it's very specific so it's just for projects and that's brand new that has just just recently come out okay let us let us dig into the so sampler box and if you are so sampler subscriber you have probably gotten your box at least seven eight ten days ago something like that but you know I don't look in the box until it comes and I like to show you uh, what's in here because most of the products you know are, are they might be new to you they might be new to me um, there's also some exclusive things so this is a subscription project product so you subscribe to these and they're mystery uh, very reasonable you always get a coupon uh, so anyways let's look let's look see what's in here the unveiling I don't even know what the theme was I've forgotten oh what's this say I can't read it upside down farm life are you a farm girl who's a farm girl raise your hand if you love I love farms I'm like a I'm like a city slicker so I would be like you know really not a farm girl but I love that whole thought of it I like the farmhouse stuff you know the I like the uh, sort of the whitewash and the shiplap and I like all the stuff that's all out there now for farm things so there is the theme and then what happens is in the box the things that are in here are uh, sort of color coordinated or work with this ah what do we got they give us a little book each time that tells us everything that's in here and I find a mini oh this is so darn cute it's like a mini jelly roll it's on oh it's one of the honey buns okay so honey buns are what is that uh, an inch and a half jelly rolls are two and a half inches I think this is an inch and a half and this is this amazing my friend um, uh, what was it called flowers f-l-o-u-r like you know like feed sacks that kind of flower so this is Lindsay's fabric and I told Lindsay I think she knocked it out of the park this one is so darn cute and I just love it what else did we get the creative grids three and a half by six and a half inch roller I don't have that size so that's a neat size um, I bet it goes with something else in here we will see ah look at the gingham bag this is so cute I may have to keep this one folks the gingham bag that is darling ah and if you got the box you got the planner so if you were signed up you got one of the planners but if you weren't of course the planners are now available and they always give you a pattern to use the fabric so the patterns that you generally exclusive uh, but sometimes they put it out later so here's the pattern that uses this which is pretty cute so you can get on the list for the subscription oh there's also a second pattern for a sew along so there's a sew along that's going on the Corey Yoder designed uh, and it's called goodness grows which I love that name some years I've tried to sew along with it but uh, not this year it's a little, a little too much this year so that's great this was an awesome box I love this gingham bag oh my gosh and the fabric I love that fabric I don't know I might have to do something with that mini that is too darn cute too darn cute 
So what else do I have to show you? Um, did let me just remind you. Let me put this here. Let me whoop, let me remind you <laughs> that the charity so long started. Woohoo! And if you want to make the blocks like mine, there's with the Bonnie Lane and the second block. I'm sort of making the blocks ahead so I can see how it's going and it looks really good in Bonnie Lane. And then I'm still waiting to hear if I should be doing this. Should I be doing these butterflies? Yeah, I did that in a pop-in. I asked in a pop-in. I think a lot of people said, of course, yes, of course you want me to do more things. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I feel a little nutty. I'm like, why am I doing all this? Because it's fun. We do it because it's fun, right? That's what we're all about. So I have to give you my cross stitch update. Yes, indeedy. And also, oh, thank you for using all my links when you're shopping. That helps our small family business. Greg and I thank you very much uh, for any time you shop, whether it's at Amazon, Fat Quarter Shop, Connecting Threads, Nancy's Notions, um, Fabric.com. We, we work with all of them. So we appreciate that. The charity so along that I just showed you the blocks, wherever I stuck them, I don't know where I put them, but the blocks, uh, <laughs> we have the cross stitch portion. So I've got it started. What do you think? So there's still a little bit more to do of that. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, I need to, I need to do some more. I need to work a little quicker. This is, I printed it out. Whoop. You know, I'm a baby cross stitcher. I, I know I told my friends, I said, I've actually cross stitched one, finished one thing in my life so far. So I really am a baby cross stitcher. This is the section. So you can see for uh, the month, well, no, it's not the month, I'm sorry. There's twice a month. First and 15th, the charity comes out. So the next one will be the 15th. So I have to do all of this by the 15th, which if I leave it out, my key is to leave it out. I have to leave it out on the table uh, or it does not happen. So when I came back from, from um, sewing with my friends the other day, I put it away and I realized this morning I, it was put away. That's not a good thing. So I went and got it out and also I'm working on the shamrock and we're, we're moved, I moved ahead, remember, to March on this one so I can get something done. There's March. So I have to keep that one out too. So I'm gonna to try to get the charity one done first and then this one. So I do have all of this month to get March done. But I need to I need to move on move on it a bit more. I will. I've decided I will. I will I will get it done. <laughs> Maybe I need to put it in that journal. Where's the journal? <laughs> there it is. So they actually have a cross stitch journal too. But um, I, I maybe I'll put Maybe I'll transfer, what I'm, here's what I'm thinking. Wonder if I transfer like my top five projects into here that are not, you know, like the cross stitch and um, working on Norm, you know, poor Norm over there. He feels so lonely that I have made one Norm. I have a bunch of parts of Norm start, other Norms for the Norm and Nanette gnome quilt. But he's, uh, I keep leaving him up there thinking it's going to, it's, uh, it'll be motivating. So maybe I'll do that. What do you think? Should I do that? Should I take maybe five projects and put them in here? Maybe I will do that. So let's see. I, see, did we have a question? No, it wasn't a question. This, I brought this over from the Facebook group that, uh, and, and you've probably heard this before, but if not, it's always good. Someone wrote in there. Uh, I think my friend Bonnie Hunter may have said this first years ago. Uh, she says, so the saying is, there's no ugly fabric. It just hasn't been cut small enough yet. <laughs> so if you take anything that you think you think is ugly fabric, if you cut it down into your two, you know, two and a half inch squares for a traffic jam, and then just sprinkle them around, then you won't even notice them anymore. They'll be fine. And if it still isn't so nice, well, maybe you give it away. Maybe you give that fabric away. That might be a good plan to do that. So I have a little goodie bag. What's in the goodie bag for this week? So first, let's do the winner. First, let's do the winner from last week. Last week, I had this uh, whole goodie bag. 
And the question last week was, um, do you do what kind of handwork do you do? And a lot of you, you only do your binding on, on your quilts. <laughs> that's not handwork. That's not handwork, quilters. That's <laughs> that's like a necessity. I do my binding on the machine, so you know I don't even do that. Um, but who who am I giving this to? Yeah, I lost my. <laughs> I was looking for her name. Terry J K. Terry J. Her last name starts with a K. <laughs> so Terry says, I do some hand embroidery. Just finished a koala stitch along with Elisa from Penguin and Fish for a fundraiser, but she's new at embroidery. And the other thing I really enjoy is crocheting. I've been doing that for 30 years, and also she's done some cross stitch. So yes. Those are the ones I do. I haven't crocheted for a long time, but and I'm just learning cross stitch, but I have done um, embroidery and some type of embroidery ever since I was probably eight years old when I taught myself. So this whole cute thing goes to Terry and I will be emailing her. So look in your email, Terry. And this week, um, I want to know, what did I say I want to know? Ah, let's go back to the planner, the planner. So I want to know what, in, for February, what project or projects do you want to work on that are sort of your your ufo collection you know things that not a current project like not the out west or the childhood um games you know those are current projects i'm looking at you know what is a ufo or something you haven't worked on in a long time something you're going to dig out like i have a friend that just dug out some stuff from five years ago she told us sue did that you know it's a hexagon project and she's uh, another friend margaret uh, showed up hexagon type quilt and Sue was like oh I could get those old blocks out and I could use that kind of setting that Margaret did so you know she got inspired to pull them out so that would be a, the kind of project Sue would put in here like her hexagons but what so I want to know from you what like projects leave in the comments what projects would you do and the, the giveaway I should show you that first I have I'm giving away one of these Yay! So one of those, one of the, the journals. And I have this fun tote bag. What does this one say? What's this say? If I have a seam member in my hand, it's not a good time. <laughs> I love these sayings. I love it. And this has a darling red polka dot lining. So that plus, plus, here is a... Uh, yeah, this is a Jolly Bar, which are five by tens, uh, and a pattern that uses it, uh, uses a five by ten, and then you add solid fabric to it. So this is a darling sweet line from Joanna Figueroa. And then in here is also, I'm giving away in this grouping, one of the Ulfa um, knives. So the, you know, it's like a box cutter or like a, doing for paper a spool of orphil thread yay and a little ofa cutter little ofa cutters so all of that is going to go to somebody but what you have to tell me in the comments at my website are is what projects in february what project or projects in february are you going to work on that are older so what will you pull out and spend some time at least some time in february on them so friend, I'm so happy you came. I'm so excited that you visited with me today. Um, I love you. I hope that everything is going really well. I hope that we, you're surviving your winter wherever you are. And I will see you online. See you later.